about 18 months ago, I put out a video with an overview of all the basics of Metal Earth kits. Since that time, I built a lot of these kits, so what I wanted to do was put out a few videos on some of the finer points that I've discovered along the way to help you have more fun with your kits. We're going to start out with the tools, and then future videos will proceed through organization, assembly, and finally cleaning. So I hope you enjoy it. Hope it's useful for you. Let's get started. Most of the tools I use would be considered specialty tools, so you may not find them at your local store, but all of them are available online. I've divided them into two major groups, essential tools and optional tools. The ones we'll start out with are the essentials. On the left is tweezer nose pliers, followed by flush cutters, followed by chain nose pliers, followed by small tweezers. 90% of the time when I'm building a metal earth kit, you'll find one of these essential tools in my hand. So we'll look at each one individually and take a closer look. During assembly, the tweezer nose pliers are my go-to tool. They have the ability to reach into tight places like tweezers do, but with the control of handled pliers. There's a little spring in them also that helps. They are brand Zuron, and the uh, search can be done by tweezer nose 450. Alternately known as flush cutters or sometimes wire cutters, these tools are used in electronics assembly, jewelry making, and wire work to leave a flush square cut on one side. You can't get along without them for use in cutting the pieces and parts from the metal earth flat sheets. As you can see, the cutter quality varies between brands. The one on the right was not heavily used, but didn't last very long. The one on the left was used in at least a dozen Metal Earth kits, and they still work perfectly. If Fascinations wanted to brand a pair of pliers with their name on it, this would be a great choice. I can't say enough good things about these cutters. They make a clean, flush cut and don't leave behind any nubs that need to be filed off. Uh, they are great cutters at a very low price. Definitely five star. Chain nose pliers are used in jewelry making. They have smooth, non-serrated jaws for wire work. If you need to bend a tab that you have access to, they give you more leverage than the tweezer nose pliers, and this is my go-to tool for twisting tabs or making other stronger bends. When it comes to bending tabs, these $2 Walmart tweezers take no prisoners. The jaws on them are curved and angular so that they can adapt to just about any bending situation. The tweezers on the left sometimes come with the Iconix Metal Earth kits. They're a little bit beefier than the Walmart tweezers, so if you need a little extra leverage, uh, you can sometimes get a better bend, although I don't use them frequently. While not essential, these optional tools offer me convenience and versatility. Let's go over them one at a time. For most of my bending, I use metalworking tools called transfer punches. They come in sets and they are made of solid metal which gives you a heft and feel and makes uh, circular bending very easy. Every once in a while I can't really see if a tab is in a slot so a jeweler's loop solves that problem. Square nose pliers are used in wire work. They have wide smooth jaws and can be used in a variety of middle earth tasks. These somewhat expensive Tamiya bending pliers are nice for right angle longer bends. Sometimes I use a flathead screwdriver to bend tabs over uh, because it works better than my thumbnail. Round nose pliers are used in wire work and I use them in metal earth kits for just miscellaneous circular bending. When I make a mistake and need to unfold a tab Usually working an X-Acto hobby blade knife uh, up under the tab will do the job, but be careful. Okay, okay, so I'm not a purist. It's just that sometimes super glue will save your day. And uh, 
the super glues come in various viscosities. Uh, the one on the left, the Loctite, is a, is a brush-on, and on the right is a uh, drop-on that's a thicker consistency. The super glues, you know, at the bottom I pick up on eBay, I call them one-shots, and uh, you have to be really careful because they are the water consistency, and if you even touch it, you might find the tube glued to your finger. The only thing standing between these two model kits and the garbage can was super glue. So if you look at the one on the left, this is a brass kit, and brass is very unforgiving. When you start bending it, you get about one chance. The one on the right was a TIE Fighter, which was a, a horrible, shaky mess without judicious use of uh, super glue. It's invisible, you can't tell, and sometimes it's just the, the best thing that you can do. That's about it, so I hope this video has helped you with your Metal Earth pursuits. And happy modeling!